Hello, I'm Captain Iceblock. My hero pool consists of all the heroes named Storm Spirit and Hero Spirit you, guides on Storm, other heroes, lanes, mechanics, and everything in between. I also stream, coach, and analyze your replays. To support the content, you can get one of those services or just buy me a cup of coffee on Patreon. And with all that said, let's go. Storm clouds are gathering! Anti-Mage is regarded as one of the top counters to Storm Spirit. And out of curiosity, I've looked up my own statistics for Storm vs AM, and surprisingly, my total win rate stands at 56% and just in 721C patch 67%. Well then, let's find out what methods we can apply to make Storm feel not so countered and counter back. My favorite tactic is to simply get Orchid before AM gets Manta and just kill then kill again, and even after AM gets Manta, catch it on cooldown, then kill some more. Observe. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Over here now! Structures are Monster modified. kill. Here I am! Thanks for playing Dota 2. Double kill. Killing spree. I will ignore your email number of kills. Hello, this is Gabe Newell. Of course, not every match will allow for early Orchid, not every match will leave weak anti-mage unattended, and not every match will have a weak anti-mage in the first place. So today, we will analyze a match where we almost lost a bunch of times and what choices led to not only surviving anti-mage, but also resulted in a victory. Let's begin. As a storm, I hate laning against heroes who cripple my ability to farm in one way or another. I also hate heroes on which I do not have kill potential at 6. Anti-mage, thanks to mana drain and blink, is both. And because I won't farm as good, getting an early orchid is out of the question. So because I know anti-mage will prefer to mostly farm and split push during the mid game, and since we have techies to de-push, I opt for Midas to accelerate my mid game farming session. If all things go as expected, I should have my bigger items by the time anti-mage is fighting with his team. For now, my job is to keep up with his farm. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. One thing Storm should be very cautious about when playing against Anti-Mage, and this applies to all the matches, is spending all of his mana. Plan your pickoffs in a way that leaves you with enough of a mana pool to not suicide bomb your teammates, unless mana void has been used recently, and or it is inconvenient for Anti-Mage to rotate right now. Here I am! I'm over here! Where's the party? Blows of touche! Double kill. Sound the death. Blown away! And after AM's ult is used, Storm can continue fighting behind his team or just retreat to the base to refill. Never parade around the map with next to zero mana pool if anti mage can target you easily. Dyer's top tower is under attack. 
Notice how I choose to walk instead of zipping out, and how I linger on the safe area of Techie's Mines. This makes sure that in case of anti-maging, I have either kill potential or an easy escape. Killing spree. Double kill. A dominating performance. Impossible kill. Also, when not fighting, but knowing that anti-mage can be nearby, keep your threats on strength. More total health, less total mana, less risk. Now, with the Bloodstone, both Storm and Anti-Mage reaches a power spike. Storm now can spend more mana pursuing pickoffs, since it regenerates faster for him to escape safely. However, if caught, Anti-Mage will enjoy a bigger mana pool for his ultimate. So once again, while Storm can pick off more efficiently, extra safety should be considered in regards to Anti-Mage's potential ambush. Lincoln's is another power spike, and a direct counter to Anti-Mage. In an ideal world, Lincoln's would be the first item Storm buys versus AM, but realistically, it would cripple every other aspect of Storm's gameplay. So we have to have either Orchid or Bloodstone first to be efficient. Here I am! Over here now! Radiance Top is under attack! <laughs> Killing spree! Double kill! Over here now! <laughs> but with both the first big item and Lincoln's, in most games, Storm can now play as aggressive as he wants. I'm over here! Putin pop! Oh I'm saying most games because some games heroes will specifically withhold spells just to break Storm's Lincoln's. But in that case, just hold back and let your team do the job first. So, assuming Storm has decent regeneration and Lincoln's, the fighting pattern goes as follows. Is Lincoln's active? Go target weaker heroes. Is Lincoln's on cooldown? Zip out for a while, watch where anti-mage is, zip back to the fight if AM is far away or Lincoln's came off cooldown. But most importantly, never stay in the same spot. If Anti-Mage cannot predict your movements, you become an indesirable target, forcing him to unload his spells and items onto someone else. Even with Lincoln's, once Storm focuses on a target for too long, or loses enough mana to not be able to do bigger jumps, Anti-Mage just needs one second to pop Lincoln's with a Beastle and ult. <laughs> Lastly, if your team has ways to join the fight fast, as they should, initiate by applying a disable and then simply dance around until your team joins the fight. Here I am! Oh, well, I'm over here! A dominating performance. Onage. You had your warning! Here I am! And this concludes the portion how to avoid being countered by Anti-Mage. Now we enter the portion where we counter Anti-Mage himself. Some AM players will rely only on their passive for spell blocking and feel that picking up Lincoln's or BKB will feel redundant. These kind of players are the easiest targets. Once they use Manta for farming or fighting, one Orchid application can often mean their death. However, Smarter players will consider picking up BKB. In that case, if Storm's team has decent initiation, Storm can pick up Hex and lead the ambush parties towards AM. Dominating, I guess. Onage. Reminder here that Hex can be built first before Orchid if it makes catching anti-mage easier. But once you have Hex and Orchid, or better yet, Bloodthorn, that's where I am turns into your bitch. 
Not only do you have sufficient region to never linger in the same spot, making it impossible for him to catch you without external disables, but once Antimage uses Manta and BKB, he has to be extra careful because Storm is fully regenerated and is coming for him next. A second Bloodstone further diminishes any hope for Antimage to be able to 1 vs 1 Storm ever again. The only way Storm is dying at this point is if his team misplays and Storm has to defend against a greater number of heroes than he otherwise would, gets permanently disabled from some bigger ultimates, or just eats a streak of bashes. Structures are fortified. Touché. Zap. Over here now. Zap. I'm yes. over here. Over here now. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Diamond's top tower is under attack. Six out. That was unreal. Double kill. <laughs> Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower has fallen. Over here. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Radiant's are Killing spree. Onage. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Sit down. To recap how to counter anti-mage, never stay in the same spot more than a few seconds. If your team is initiating, find and hex anti-mage first. 
His anti-mages team is initiating, pick off his friends and family, wait until Manta and BKB is used, then commit shameless homicide with their chain disables. Maintain map control by depushing everything using your superior region. Claim the throne. Your level of success will of course vary by what kind of team composition anti-mage has, how fat he is and how fat you are. But in most cases, Storm can survive being countered and countered back by making the right choices. Good luck. Over here now. Ladies and gentlemen,